Hello everybody. In this video, I'm gonna be working on the iPad with one of the new features, Shape Aware Transform. This came out in, let's see, October, 2021. And I have played with it a little bit and I'm still sort of trying to figure out where it fits into my workflow. So let's take a look here. What I have is sort of a collection of objects here, just individual. So I'm tapping on them to show you that they're just individual objects and they're not grouped. However, I created these shapes here like so, and then I put them into a radial repeat. So you can select a group of objects um, like those three paisleys up here and then put them into a radial repeat. And the way you do this, I'm just gonna sort of back up here and show you how I did this. I'm gonna tap on this little plus sign here to drag copy out these objects. Next, I'm going to the bottom right of the screen here to this repeat menu, and then I'll choose radial. And now I have a radial repeat like this, and you can use the slider to change the number and do other things in terms of moving how they're positioned and all that. So this is how I created this design here at the bottom. Let me go ahead and I'm just gonna throw that one away. And then when you have your finished radial repeat, I'll make a copy of this to demonstrate, you can expand it. If you just go into the menu here on the right, it's called the object menu, just click expand. Now what we have is a group of objects, so you want to tap on ungroup, and now we have individual objects. The reason I'm showing you this is because this is an interesting part of the ShapeAware transform feature. It allows you to edit multiple objects at one time. So let's take a look at this. So if I go ahead and select all of these objects, I have them selected with my black arrow, my selection tool. I'm gonna to choose the second selection tool, the direct selection tool. And when you do this, you're gonna see what opens up here at the bottom of the toolbar is this little icon here for shape aware. Let me go back and select all these. Tap on that to turn it on. And now we can see how Illustrator is sort of sensing the edges and the geometry of these shapes here. And when you have a number of them selected, and especially when they're copies like this, then you can edit all of them at once using this feature. So basically this is a feature that's trying to help you edit things without having to go in and tap on the anchor points and curve handles. It's sort of a, making an abbreviated uh, way of editing these curves here. And so I'm because I have multiple objects selected, because these are copies of each other, I'm able to edit these simultaneously because I have them all selected. So as long as Shapeware is turned on and that little button at the bottom of the tool panel is engaged, then you have the ability to you know, tap on the edges here, find these little white circles, these kind of widgets here, and do these edits. When you're done, you need to tap on that button again, and now we're back to just the regular direct selection. So that's a pretty interesting thing that it can do, and I'm trying to find out how I can work it into my workflow. And I've discovered a couple of things, maybe these will be some tips that can help you. So what I'm doing here is I'm gonna go ahead and let's see, I've already kind of edited these a lot. So let me go back um, and how about if I grab one of these originals here, I'm gonna get it with my selection tool and then just copy it over to the side here so I can zoom in and we can take a look at this. So what I'm finding out is that it really depends on how these paths are drawn to start with. If you have a path or a shape that has a ton of anchor points, a ton of excess anchor points, it's not going to really uh, work so well with the shape aware transform. I think you wanna have paths that are nicely constructed. So here's an example. If I go ahead and just tap on the fill and stroke, sort of swap the fill and the stroke there so we can just see the, the outline here. Now with my direct selection tool, 
I'll select this and we can see it's pretty spare in the number of anchor points. There's just three here and one corner point. Um, and this is because I drew this with the pen tool. So this will work efficiently with that shape aware transform. But for example, if I decided to draw this or a shape similar to it with the pencil tool, let me just draw out kind of a crude paisley there. All right, see how many more anchor points I have there. So this, let's go ahead and just see what happens when I try to edit this with Shape Aware. So right now, I would probably want to do edits to this because it's got kind of a flat edge to it around here. But um, let's go ahead and just see what happens with Shape Aware. So it's selected now with the Direct Selection tool. I'm going to go ahead and engage that feature and then tap around here to see. And you see you kind of get just a little corner here. I mean, it definitely works, but it's getting a little lumpy above, you know, this area here because of the fact that I have so many anchor points, right? Let's go over to this object here and we have shape where engaged. And this is the one that only has four anchor points and it's a much easier to edit shape. So, you know, it's kind of like you can't get away from the fact that you need to be efficient in how you Place your anchor points, especially in something really simple like this, where you want a curve that just has a really simple and smooth con contour to it. So I don't necessarily think, well, you have to draw everything with the pen tool. Let me turn off Shape Aware down here, um, and I'll go ahead and throw this path away. Um, you don't necessarily have to draw everything with the pen tool. I mean, it takes some time to get used to drawing with the pen tool, but let's just draw this with the pencil tool and see if we can edit it because I love drawing with the pencil tool. Um, and then I'll show you how to draw it with the, with the pen tool. So here we have a ton of anchor points. As we can see, the one at the top here, you can see has a square. I'm trying to point at this with my cursor without drawing a new line. Let's see if I can use the... So at the top we have a corner point, and then all of these are round. You can see the round um, little anchor points. Those mean that they are smooth points. So they have those seesaw handles on both sides, whereas the corner point has um, broken handles like that. So one thing that we can do is uh, just remove anchor points. You select one, it turns dark blue. Um, the unselected are white and then we can hit on Smart Delete. So that will remove points, and generally it will keep the contour. In this case, it's a little, you know, got, got a little flat. So let's undo that. Let's try another method here. If I go ahead and draw a marquee with my Direct Selection tool, let me try to get every one of these points here. I don't wanna get that other shape. So let me just move this over, go back, get my Direct Selection tool, and now I have everything selected. There, now I have everything selected. This icon right here on the um, common actions bar is to simplify the anchor points. You can see now the label's popping up, simplify path. Tap on that. All right, so now it's drastically simplified. It maybe made it a little too simple because some of these um, handles are really long. But this is a good starting place and this will be easy to fix. So for one thing, that simplify path feature, it creates corner points wherever you simplify. So as you can see on either side here, trying to point and not affect it, on either side here, we now have corner points. The problem with that is the handles are broken, so this is gonna be hard to edit. Let me go ahead and undo that. So what you wanna do in this case is you could double tap on each point and that converts it to a smooth point. So double tapping on points converts either corner to smooth or smooth to corner. Let's undo that. Trying to get back to, huh, what was that illustrator? That's interesting, okay. <laughs> oh well, it looks like I just undid my way out of that. Let's go back to, this is some strange behavior here, isn't it? Let's see what those anchor points, have I gotten back to, no, okay, try to undo your way, redo, 
redo, redo. Okay, and I can't redo it anymore. So these are both smooth points now. And I said that they were corner points. That's because we did uh, the simplify path. Okay, things don't always <laughs> cooperate when you're making a tutorial. The thing that I was gonna show you how to do is if you just select the two anchor points that you wanna convert, like so drag a marquee, you can see those two are, are both highlighted, they're both blue. Then you can convert using, you know, so you can convert multiple anchor points at one time like that by using the common actions bar. All right, so now here we are. Um, ah, I got back to the corner point. So I'm gonna do, I think, yep. Okay, those are smooth points. All right, so backing up, we have edited this shape. We went from drawing a Paisley with the pencil tool and uh, because we're trying to maybe avoid using the pen tool if you're not familiar with it. So we're kind of editing our way into what could be something that had been drawn with the pen tool. Pen tool's great for really precise drawing and simple drawing. And once you get the hang of it, you'll find that it's an in indispensable tool. But on the iPad, it's so nice using the pencil tool. Maybe you can start with the pencil tool and edit your way into something that's more simple. So what we have now, after all that, is one, two, three points, and the handles are really long. Maybe what I would do here is grab my pen tool and add an extra point. So with the pen tool, you can just tap on a path to add a point. And this takes some of the load off of those curve handles. When curve handles get really long, they're hard to control. So we kind of like to have points that are just sitting on the tangent of, of this you know, circular curve here. Now what I can do is go back, get my direct selection tool and maybe you know, move these around and edit them. One way to move these around, I've got a keyboard here, so I like to use keyboard shortcuts. If I hold the Option or Alt key, I can select a point and slide it like this along the edge. So I'm selecting this point, holding Option or Alt and sliding it along the edge. Um, now I can go in here and grab that curve handle and just shorten it a little bit. And overall, I think this looks pretty, pretty good. So I just added an anchor point a smooth point at the top, adjusted the handles so they're a little shorter. And now I have something that is just as if I had drawn it with the pen tool. And in this case, um, when I wanna use Shape Aware Transform, it will behave, you know, better. It, it won't have all those little lumpy things when I, when I select it. So let's go ahead and do that. So I've got this path selected with the direct selection tool. And once you do that, you'll see at the very bottom here of the tool panel, you can tap on that Shape Aware Transform button. And now you can tap on an edge to find the widget. And then you have, look at that. You have what's, what's actually making a really nice smooth edit as opposed to that lumpy edit that I was getting from the shape when I just drew it with the pencil tool. Okay, so I found another widget that I can adjust here. We can see when you pull that, how it changes the shape. Really looks like it's just scaling it mostly. So you have to tap around here to see where those widgets exist. And there's really only two on this shape. Okay, so to recap, the Shape Aware Transform tool works on multiple objects as we looked at here and it works especially well when those objects are copies. So again, I'm able to engage this tool when I have the direct selection tool, and then because these are all copies, they can be edited simultaneously. So that's a really cool feature. The other thing that we've talked about in this tutorial so far is that you're better off if you have a really nicely drawn path with few anchor points um, because the more anchor points that you have, you're gonna wind up with um, sort of that widget being lumpy and only controlling part of the path. So um, I'm gonna show you how to draw this with the pen tool now. We've just drawn it with the pencil tool and sort of edited our way into something that looks like it could have been drawn uh, with the pen tool. But now we're gonna actually do this with the pen tool. So let me just uh, zoom out here and 
grab my pen tool and with the pen tool, you, you click and drag to create an anchor point, a smooth point like this. You see clicking and dragging creates a smooth point. All right, let me go back here and those are gone now. All right, so click and drag, and then I'm gonna go sort of where I think the top of this shape is, click and drag, then to the other side of this shape, click and drag. And so I've created that semicircle there. Then I'm going to the bottom of the, where I think the paisley is, click and drag. And this time I'm gonna hold the Option or Alt key and that will create this corner point. As you can see that little label popped up and said, break tangent. Then I all I just close this shape by clicking and dragging. All right, so that closes the shape and creates that smooth point. All right, so now I can go back and edit these. So let me get my direct selection tool and grab this handle right here. And you can see you create S curves like this when you have tangent, these like curve handles sort of, look how parallel they are right now. And the further you pull them, the deeper that S gets and sort of like if you get to this nice happy medium here where the handles are similar in um, length, they do this really nice gentle S curve here. Um, and then at, of course at the top, you know, maybe it's a little too fat on the left hand side. So I can just pull that handle down a little bit, adjust this handle so that it's a little bit more even. And um, let's see, certainly I could, yeah, that's a little, I can see there's a little bump there. I'm gonna hold the Option or Alt key and slide this point a bit there and just sort of even it out. You can also, I was gonna say you can constrain these handles using the shift key, but that's not working for me right now. And that might be something that works on the desktop and not on the iPad. I like using a keyboard here because I just have those keyboard shortcuts memorized, but there are there is a touch ring shortcut here um, in the lower left corner of the window here. And so for this, let me go ahead and delete this whole thing. Select it, delete it. All right, so I'm gonna tap and drag to create my first smooth point. And then I'm gonna tap and drag to create my second smooth point. And now we're gonna talk about the shortcuts. So if you tap and drag to create a smooth point, then tap and hold on the center ring, you can create a corner point and break that tangent. So that drag was just me moving the tangent handle. Now, the next tap that I do, I'm dragging it out because I'm sort of changing the direction of that curve. And then I can you know, continue drawing like this, tap to break it, continue drawing like this, tap to break it, and so on. All right, so let's go ahead and delete this. Go back to the pen tool. Now let's talk about the second shortcut. So that's the outer ring. If you just tap and drag, you get the second stage of the shortcut. Let's see how that affects the pen tool. So to begin, tap and drag to draw a smooth point. Tap and drag to draw another smooth point. And let's say I'm gonna use the outer ring this time. Tap and, dr and drag out, so you have the second uh, stage of the shortcut. And what we're seeing here is I'm able to suspend drawing of the point and move it like this. And the little label says match handles. So once I let go of this shortcut, I have handles of the same length. So I love that I'm able to sort of suspend drawing for a second and then reposition that point, sort of make the curve a little bit rounder, and then I can continue drawing. So if I just tap and drag here like this, but maybe I didn't, don't like where I placed that point, I can go to the second ring of the touch shortcut, suspend drawing, reposition that point like this, let go of it, and then pull the handles out a little bit to make that curve more round the way I wanted it. Now I'm gonna go down to the bottom here to draw the corner point. And again, I'm gonna use the, the center ring of the touch shortcut and just drag the handle like so. And then finally, I'm gonna close this shape with a smooth point by tapping and dragging. All right, so let me go back here and make some adjustments to these points. I'm just moving them around so I can get to the shape that I wanted. Of course, if you had a sketch to follow, 
you would be, um, you would know exactly where you wanted all this to go, but I'm just making these adjustments like that. So that wasn't too hard and we're using the pen tool and we're using those uh, shortcuts, which are great. So the shortcuts, if you're using a keyboard, and here's my keyboard, it's a little Logitech Bluetooth keyboard. I think it's called Keys to Go. I really like this keyboard because it's lightweight um, and it's just sort of easy to throw down and, and work with it. Um, but if you don't have one pair to your iPad, um, that two-stage shortcut is really nice. So, you know, you can do different things with the keyboard shortcuts, um, you know, on the keyboard, or you can use this little touch ring and it's a little bit different. Um, so anyway, I hope that this has been helpful and maybe gives you a little incentive to try out the pen tool if you haven't. And then of course, you know, we started out by talking about shape aware transform, and this is a really interesting feature. So I'm going to keep working with it and using it. And I hope you find it useful too. All right. Well, thank you so much for watching this video and, uh, check out my YouTube channel for more videos about iPad, Illustrator, Illustrator on the desktop, a little bit of fresco and some other things in there. And then also go to my website. My website is lauracoilcreative.com and there I have courses and tips about working in Illustrator. So I hope you'll check that out. Thank you and thank you for watching.